All right, so making a video talking about how I got into lock picking. Um, Lockmania has a giveaway where he wants people to talk about um, how they got into lock picking. And I was thinking about what lock to pick in the background while I talked about it, but um, Rune Picker last night had a, a really fun live stream uh, that you guys should check out where he's uh, picking a Mako M2 7 pin to both operating and control shears. And um, I know that for the belt ranking <clears throat> on Reddit and Discord, um, they say with SFICs that you know you need all those special equipment to pop out the pin stacks and, and repin it and stuff. So um, a lot of people are, un un are under the impre impression that you can't, um, that you can't uh, take these apart non-destructively. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart while I talk about uh, my history, and I'll, I'll I'll put it back together too, which is more the more painful part is putting it together than is taking it apart. So this might be a bit longer because it is pretty tricky to to put back together, just because um, you gotta shove three pins in into each uh, into each, into the Bible for each one. So um, as far as my um, my uh, lock picking history, um, I actually used to go up to, I went to college in Philadelphia, and I used to go up to New York City for the weekends to party and do kinds of stuff, and um, one of my friends there, uh, you know, I was staying at his place, and he said, oh, you want to learn how to pick a lock? So he showed me how to pick a lock, and I went back to Philly, picked up a lock pick kit, and started um, practicing on that, and, um, you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, but then what happened was around campus, I was living in the dorms. This is probably like, uh, this was early age of, of the World Wide Web. They didn't have a lot of internet sites and things like that. Um, oh, and, okay, so for, I'm going to use a follower. It's 11 millimeter uh, diameter, so I have a, uh, a follower that I made just for this um, for Makos because I think that the the standard ones you can print out are like 10 millimeters and the other ones are wider so 10 millimeters leaves you leaves a lot of slop I did it with 10 millimeters before um, quite a few times until I finally printed this 11 millimeter one that makes life a lot easier uh, anyways I was in the dorms and people would always get you know their roommate would they would leave their room and then their roommate would leave and lock the door and then they'd be locked out of their dorm room. Um, and then they'd have to wait for the RA to come back and they'd have to pay, I think it was like $10 at the time, uh, a fee to for the RA to come and unlock their door. So instead they would, they would come to me, I was always in my room, um, and I would pick their door open for them and the fee was a pizza. Um, so they'd buy me a pizza or a cheesesteak and um, so I got a lot of, I got a lot of, people got locked out all the time. So I don't know, they're, they're a bunch of really uh, forgetful people or whatever. Um, but I got a lot of pizzas in college because uh, that would be the payment for picking locks and for uh, fixing their computers too. I was um, really into that. But I really liked lock picking because ever since I was a kid, um, I, um, you know, my parents, my grandparents or parents would buy me some, some sort of a Christmas gift and before I even try it out, the first thing I would do would be take it apart and see how it worked. So I always loved mechanical puzzles. Uh, I'm really into electronics, having been, I uh, uh, went to school for electronics and computer engineering, uh, electrical and computer engineering, sorry. And so I've always been into circuits and making circuit boards and inventing things. So mechanical puzzles are uh, something I really like and, and that's why I feel uh, lock picking is like is like a mechanical puzzle. Uh, for this, I've taken out using the operating key. I've taken out the core, and the sleeve is still in there for the uh, control shear. Um, you can just pop them out, but if you want to do a bit more controlled, you can use this side of your uh, follower, and then you can use like a turning motion to pop that first pin out, right? And as that comes up, you can use uh, you can turn the the follower to trap the next pin and that way if you want you can grab just a single pin at a time right uh, not a good job there and you want to keep track this here barrel spool came out of pin six um, and I can't remember sometimes you want to keep track of 
which side faces the, the, the key pin. Um, you're going to want to take out the, the springs if you want to be able to remove the control sleeve. Um, but, you know, I'm going to do it from this side. Uh, that was just to show one of them. I'll just do it this side to remove it a bit faster. Uh, the only trouble, trouble here is that if you let them fly out, you might mix up the order of which one is the um, top or the bottom pin. So that's a T-pin uh, that was on the uh, the top, the control, the control uh, pin. So I mean, it's kind of like gutting a normal lock. There's there's not much to it, you know. It's like it, it might be daunting unless you see somebody do it. And I, I guess I haven't. I didn't search before this to see if people do this on YouTube or not. But um, you know, it's okay. So I, I screwed that one up a little. I think I saw which order they came out. And usually the top ones are standard. Um, if there is a standard in there, usually your security pin will be in the middle. Um, I'll come back from the other side just to not have to reach so deep into there. To get the, oh, okay, so I really screwed that one up. But again, I'll show you how to recover from that. I think these are in this order, but I could be wrong. It doesn't really matter. Oh, T pin, so that's probably the top one anyway, so I'm probably right. Um, but we'll, we will double check everything. Uh, during reassembly to make sure that we have these pins in the right positions. So now we have all the pins out. And I'm actually going to take a photo of this. I like to have a photo of my, um, oh dang it, my phone is in use, isn't it? Because it's running the, uh, running the GoPro. Okay, I'll have to take this apart another time which to take a photo, which really sucks because um, it's a pain in the butt. But um, now that all those are removed and the springs are removed because the springs are going to stop this from falling out, there's your control sleeve. Okay. Um, and what you can do is, you know, your standard, you can stick your operating key in the core. You know, um, these are cut a bit long. They don't have a shoulder. These don't, these Mako keys don't have shoulders on them. So you can actually, you know, go really deep. But, but it's obviously it's obvious which ones your key pins are so that um, you know I don't if you've messed up your key pin order like any other gutting you can just stick them back in here I'm not going to do all of them and make sure that they go up to the shear line like that and that way you know that you're getting the uh, you know once you get them all in they should all go to the shear line none should pop up none should pop under and that's how you know you have the right uh, right pins in the right uh, chambers for that um, but let's say now you don't know, you know, you saw some of these popped out and we're not 100% sure of the order. So what you can just do is you can um, take your uh, control sleeve and, you know, I tried like this. I was like, well, what's going on? These holes are, too, you know, it's not working right. It's, you know, you got to get it the right way around. So you want the thick part to be in line with those ones. Then you can, what you can do is you can take your control key. There's my control key. Shove that in there. And you'll go through the similar process. You're gonna drop. You're gonna to have to drop your um, your uh, operating pin down there, and then you're gonna to have to drop the middle pin of the stack in there. And when you get this lined up right, and you have to see, so you have to get this lined up right until um, until that drops down into there. Actually, it's easier to stick them all in without the key. This one comes really close to the top of the, uh, the stack there. So maybe I got that backwards, we'll see. We'll see once we get them all in. And if this video is a bit longer, hopefully hopefully this helps Rune Picker and anybody else that um, wants to uh, take apart their SFICs. And it's a very similar thing if you're taking apart um, your best, your uh, Ilkos, whatever that you got for SFIC or LFIC. Um, the Sergeant, I think it's the Sergeant, is a little bit different. The one that operates off the middle to um, the pins three and four only. Uh, but you can take it apart with basically the same process. All right, so looking at this, I see that there are a number of um, pins really close to the shear line there. Uh, okay, and that makes sense because those are the deep cuts, right? So they're only going to lift it a little. So deep, really deep cut here uh, 
shows that it's right near the, the shear line. So I'd say this is about right, but you know, don't go off of that. Go off of the actual key in the cylinder to the right depth. And you can see all the pins are at that shear line there. So hopefully you can see. Um, so that tells me I didn't mess up the pins. Make sure when you put the T pins that you're facing the, the thin part down towards the key. Um, now that now that this is done, actually what you can do is what I like to do. Oh, all right, well there's pin six already. What I like to do to get these back out rather than um, dump them together with everything. Now that you're at the, um, what am I talking about? What you do is you take your um, operating key, put it in there, and then what you can do is you can turn it. And now when you um, drop these pins out, you're only going to be dropping that middle pin out not your uh, key pin, right? Which is good because um, you don't, then you don't need to take, because you, you don't need to take the key pins at out, out at all to reassemble this. But we do need to take these control pins back out. Or these middle pins back out. Um, they're the driver pins for the, um, they're the driver pins for the operating. And the top ones are the driver pins for the control. These ones can be thought of as the key pins for the control. All right, so now that I've taken that out, right, I can go about my reassembly. So what we'll do is we'll shove the sleeve back into there. It, if if you, you you can't do it backwards, right? It's it doesn't go in far enough. So that way you'll get. And the air handler for the AC just kicked in. Hopefully it doesn't make too much noise. All right, so now that we got this in, uh, it's just like reassembling a lock. Um, you need to make sure that your uh, control is sticking out like that, right? It needs to be in the locked position. Um, it'll become obvious when you try to drop your first spring in, if it's in the open position, that your spring doesn't go in. So you need the locked position like that, and then drop your springs all over the place. Um, put that in there. And as you get more, you can, you can drop all your springs in, but then maybe you'll have a hard time getting the follower in. So I, I like to take a second to think at this point. I want the flat end, it doesn't really matter, but I like the flat end to be towards the, um, the front. But having this half moon end will help me reload this in that I can I can put my whole, there's, there's a number of ways to do this. If you have um, master pin, uh, master wafers or things like that, you might need to do something like this, where you put your whole pin stack uh, in the um, in there like that, and then you can push the whole. Well, once I get over the right hole, you can push the whole thing down and in. Now I don't see. So you can push the whole thing down and in, and then you're in. Um, I see. I did. I messed up. I should have done it from the other side, right? Uh, so that I can use this for all of them. Um, but instead, I'll be using the flat part. Eh, it's fine too. You can use the flat part. You do it like you take it, you put your spring in to number four. Oh, okay, put my spring into number five. Okay, so now that's in five. And I can take. Oh, look. Okay, so I gotta think of this. Did I put those first two in the right order? Probably not. Um, let me go ahead and pop them out. I bet you I screwed up. And I, I see I did. I put the barrel in first, right? But that one's the one that's closest to the... That one was closest to the key pin, so the fact that I put that in first was a mistake. So it's a good thing I took this back apart. So I'm going to actually use the... I'm going to start from pin four, that way I can do three from this side, then three from the other. I know I'm rambling on and jumping all over the place, but I like, you know, it's good to see the mistakes as you go on so that you can um, know what maybe to expect and how to recover from it. So I don't mind having a lot of mistakes in the video. All right, so now I got the, I got the one pin in. Uh, you might be able to see it halfway in there, and I covered it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other pin, and I'm going to grab it towards the top, and I'm going to use this to hold the downward pressure on the pin as I pull the follower out so that I can go ahead and stick this middle pin in and there 
like that. You see it's held, and then I can take the tweezers and push it down all the way, and then I can slide the follower over, and that's loaded. All right, now make sure I take the, see I have these in order. I should be taking this, this near the spring. It might be helpful to flip this whole mat around so that you know you're taking from the one side. I don't know. However works for you. All right, there's no right way to do this. Well, I mean, I guess to say there's a bunch of right ways to do this, right? So, all right, there's pin five. I'm actually showing you a couple different ways that you could do this. Hopefully, it'll help people find their own method that's probably better than mine. And then keep in for six. And this is going to take a little while because I have to go through all these, but um, this is just to show you that it can be done quite easily as long as you have some patience. All right. Make sure I take the one that's ne near the spring here. And I don't like these short pens because they're they can be a little bit of a pain to to grip with the tweezers and get in and all that stuff. All right, my uh, follower is grabbing the tweezers. All right, so there's three. Number two, get that down in there. Uh, yeah, see how small this this pin is so small. It's hard to hard to pick up, hard to get in there. It always wants to like stand on its side like that, you know, like you have to lay it down. It's generally a pain in the butt. Um, right, I don't have a good grip on this serrated, so. Serrated in, last pin, pin one, get that in. T pin, make sure it's facing the right direction. Get that in there this little tiny mini spool. Mm, get it to lay the right way, come on. One last pin. Mini spool in. Oh, and I... Maybe I'll do it the other way for this last one. Alright, start over. T-pin. Stuck in the Sparrows logo. T-pin, let's dial this to get that over there pin, get it on top, push down my entire stack. Okay, that's loaded. Uh, make sure that I face this half moon like this so that the springs don't all pop out when I'm sticking this in. Now is a good time to double check that you're, because even if you screwed those up, as long as your operating is correct, you can always take it back apart again. Or you could pick it, right? Whichever. Um, good chance to double check that those are all uh, lining up to the shear with the operating key before we pop it back in and load her back up, lock her up, toss the C clip back on. Uh, I can't help you figuring out how to do C clips, they're just a pain in the butt for everything. Um, C clips back on, here's the operating key works. It kind of catches going left. I don't know. Uh, a lot of Mako keys seem to be low cut. You see I have a bunch of these. Um, these are the ones that came with the lock. And even turning right, like you have to get lucky to get it to work. So they sent me new cut keys. They're great customer service. Um, the new cut keys, I mean, you have to get the right depth. I don't. I, I do have the C clip. One thing with the C clip, you want to make sure it blocks the bottom of the keyway. That way, you can stick the key all the way in. Otherwise, it'll pop out the back if you have the opening of the C clip facing down. But um, yeah, even the replace. Oh, this, well, I'm stupid. Control key. You can see control key is working, right? That's why I won't turn. Control key, operating key. Okay, see, still a little bit sticky to the right, better than the original ones, but this is the new ones. And turning left is really sticky. And that's because some of these are cut too low. Um, the original ones that they sent me, some of them were 15 thousandths of an inch too low. The new ones are better. They're a bit better on the tolerances, but they're still a little bit uh, too low on their cuts. Um, but yeah, uh, they, they took care of it, sent me out a bunch of new keys, so it works. But anyways, um, that is gutting of a Mako M2 or FSIC in general. 
and uh, that is most of my lock picking story. Oh, so to end the locking lock picking story, uh, so since college I've been picking on and off, mostly off. Uh, it's been about 25 years. Yeah, I am a little bit older. Um, and only lately have I been getting into more high sec uh, type locks. Uh, before that, it was always just to get into, it was just to earn, earn a pizza, right? Um, after college, my friends still wanted to give me pizzas for computer repairs and, and things like that. And I had to be like, no, you know, it's a bottle of wine now or something like that. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed and you found something useful out of this. Um, all right, thanks.